In this video, we'll try to derive the DC characteristics of uh, differential uh, and MOS uh, transistors, MOSFET devices. Uh, so, besides uh, linear amplifiers, we have uh, other important configurations like differential amplifiers. They are uh, commonly used in uh, analog electronics for uh, suppression of the noise that is coupled to the both of the input terminals. So, uh, now the difference between uh, uh, this uh, linear amplifier and differential amplifier is that it always amplifies the difference of the input signal. So, uh, besides linear amplifier configurations, like we have discussed before, small signal amplifications, like uh, common uh, source and uh, source follower configurations, uh, which has one, they, they have one input and one output terminal. Over here, we have two inputs. Okay, so figure one shows the, uh, basically the block diagram of another important configuration, which is known as a difference amplifier. So we have two inputs and then we have an output. And this output is basically amplifying the difference. Okay, so uh, this is this is amplifying the difference of the, the two inputs. So let's say A0 is the open loop gain of the, uh, of the of the uh, difference amplifier and then you have the difference signal v2 minus v1 okay so so for example if you have a noise that is coupled at both the terminals v2 and v1 the noise gets suppressed okay so so for low noise switching applications for example uh, the difference amplifiers are commonly used in analog electronics so ideally uh, the output signal is proportional to the only difference between the two input signals and uh, the ideal output voltage can be written as such okay so it's an, you can see this is an amplification of the different signals okay so uh, a v naught is the uh, open loop voltage gain over here and uh, in the ideal case if v1 is equal to v2 you can see the output becomes zero because the difference is zero so the output is zero if the, uh, v1 is equal to v2 and we only obtain a non-zero output voltage if v1 and v2 are not equal okay so it's only the difference that gets amplified by differential amplifier that's the basic purpose to suppress the common mode signal and to amplify the different signal okay so we define the differential mode input voltage from this block diagram uh, vd as uh, v1 minus v2 okay well, i've written that v2 minus v1 but i mean in general it's the difference between the two uh, to input signals okay so the common mode input voltage is the given as the average of the two uh, available signals it's v1 plus v2 or 2 so these equations show that if v1 is equal to v2 the differential mode input signal is zero and the common mode input signal vcm is v1 which is equal to v2 so if v1 is equal to v2 you don't have any difference the output becomes zero and uh, in that case the common mode voltage defined as the average of two signals is either v1 and v2 okay so uh, one of the goal of the design of a differential amplifier is to minimize the effect of uh, the common mode input signal which happens to be the noise uh, for such applications of differential amplifiers and uh, one of the figure of merits the ability of uh, the differential amp amplifier to reject this common mode signal is described in terms of the common mode rejection cmrr the so cmrr is a figure of merit for this differential amplifier configuration and it's defined as a ratio of the differential gain to the common mode gain. So AD is the differential mode gain, uh, ACM is the common mode gain, okay. Uh, ideally, uh, since differential amplifier should not be amplifying any common mode signal, so your common mode, common mode gain should be zero or or should be very, uh, very small, uh, should have a very small value. And this implies that CMRR should be, uh, should be very large, should be, should be. Uh, should approach to infinity in ideal conditions. So usually CMR is expressed in decibels as 20 logarithm of AD or ACM. And uh, so if a differential amplifier uh, uh, has, a, has, a, has a very large common mode rejection ratio, then uh, the design of that differential amplifier is good. It serves the purpose that it's amplifying the different signals while it is suppressing the uh, common mode signals. Okay, so this is one of the design's goals to uh, have a huge, have a large uh, common mode rejection ratio so that uh, the noise or the common mode signals that both the uh, input terminals can be suppressed. Okay, uh, let's consider a basic NMOS uh, differential pair. Okay, you can see there are two uh, NMOS uh, identical transistors, or you can say they are matched. Okay, matched means uh, basically these transistor M1 and M2 are. Uh, the construction is the same and it's done on the same silicon uh, wafer. So you, you get the same conduction parameter threshold voltages and they are 
uh, reaction to the temperature changes are the same. Okay, so M1 and M2 are, are identical, having a, a identical characteristics like threshold voltage, like conduction parameters, like electron mobility, etc. Okay, M1 and M2 are matched. So they, these are uh, two NMOS devices, and you also see over here that uh, these two uh, devices are being biased by a uh, by, by an independent current source. Okay, and uh, Usually in practice, uh, you can have a current mirror, uh, for example, circuit over here, and this current source is also uh, is also a MOSFET device, okay, which is operating in a saturation region of or active region operations, and uh, therefore you see you don't have, you don't require any voltage divider at the uh, gate terminals of the uh, NMOS devices, okay, because this even even if you, you don't have any signal at VG1 and VG2, you don't have any biasings or biasing resistances at VG1, VG2. This M1 and M2 uh, are both uh, operating in saturation region, okay. You don't need uh, the biasing of VG1, VG2, and uh, to ensure that uh, the VDS is beyond the transition point, uh, VDS set. So this constant current is enough. To ensure that these two current ID1 and ID2 are the saturation currents of the MOSFETs M1 and M2, okay, and uh, also you notice that uh, there is a symmetry in the circuit, okay. So for example, RD is the same resistance that uh, is connected the drain terminals of M1 and M2. Therefore, you can see uh, that uh, uh, for identical transistors and symmetrical circuits, well, IQ can be written as if you apply uh, KCL over here then uh, this uh, IQ will be, uh, will be bifurcated into two currents. It will be ID1 plus ID2. Okay, so it's going to be divided equally between the two uh, symmetrical uh, common source configurations of M1 and M2. Okay, so, uh, so figure two shows this basic um, uh, MOSFET differential pair uh, with a constant current IQ. So we assume M1 and M2 are always biased in the saturation region. Okay. So even without any need of uh, coupling capacitors or bypass uh, resistors, uh, M1 and M2 are both uh, in saturation region okay, because of the current source. So the basic MOSFET differential amplifier is both positive negative bias voltages. You can see over here, okay, there are positive negative bias voltages. Uh, but uh, there's no need for coupling capacitors and the voltage divider biasing resistors at the gate terminals. Okay, So even with uh, VG1, VG2 equal to zero, the transistors M1 and M2 can be biased in the saturation region by the current source IQ. So this circuit is also called DC coupled differential amplifier because these are these are uh, positive and negative DC sources that are present over here. Okay. All right. Now uh, let's uh, consider this example 11.8 uh, from the course text, and uh, <clears throat> the objective is to calculate the DC characteristics of the MOSFET differential amplifier. And uh, so we are going to consider. Okay, we are going to consider a differential amplifier shown in figure three. This is MOSFET differential amplifier, for example, 11.8. The transistor parameters are so Kn and K1. K uh, conduction parameters for the MOSFETs M1 and M2 are given as 0.1 uh, milliamp volt squares. Similarly, Kn3 and Kn4 is 0.3 milliamp volt squares. And for all transistors, uh, the channel bit modulation parameter lambda is equal to zero. And for all transistors, the threshold voltage is the same. Okay, so this simply implies that uh, your output resistance, small signal output resistance, which is given as one over lambda IQ, is infinite. Okay, so you don't need to consider the output resistance; it's uh, it's uh, it's infinity. Okay, or it's open circuit. So the output resistance of MOSFET devices, all MOSFET devices, M1, M2, M3, M4, uh, is infinity. Okay, we are not going to consider that. Threshold voltage is the same. And uh, the conduction parameters uh, tells you that M1 and M2 are matched, similarly M4 and M3 are matched. Basically, this part of the circuit, which you are, which you are uh, looking over here, forms the current source. Okay, it's it's like a uh, it's like a biasing circuit for M1 and M2, and uh, the bias the type of biasing that it is uh, uh, providing to those transistors is that these transistors M1 and M2 will be uh, operating in the active region or in the saturation region. And this IQ is the saturation current for M4 and M3 uh, when they are on, when they are conducting, right? So basically M4 and M3 are, it's, it's like a, a current mirror, okay? So IQ is the same current as I1, okay? It's, uh, it's, like, it's like a current mirror configuration, okay? And it's providing the current biasing in turn to M1 and M2, so that M1 and M2 are also in operating in saturation region at the same time, okay? So, uh, so uh, the objective is to determine the maximum range of the 
common mode uh, input voltage go so let's uh, start with the uh, dc analysis uh, let, let's start finding the currents so the reference current uh, that is going to bias m1 and m2 uh, it can be determined from uh, well uh, you can you can see uh, for the output loop over here uh, if you look at the drain terminal which is connected to the gate of m3 <clears throat> so this is the gate you have the drain of uh, M3. So if, if, I, if I write this as basically this gate, G, G3 is also G4, right? G3 is also G4, and this is G3. So I can write this as I, I have to find I1. I1 is why I'm interested in I1 because I1 is the same as IQ, and IQ is providing the current biasing to M1 and M2. Basically, this is the saturation currents for M4 and M3. So so to find IQ, let's find I1 bus first. So you see, I1 is uh, basically this is. 10 minus uh, so 10 volts is there okay that's the positive uh, DC biasing DC supply so 10 uh, minus uh, this terminal D3 we can write this as VG4 because this is tied to VG4 it's the, it's the same thing and uh, divided by divided by R1 that is 30 kilos okay that is divided by R1 so uh, now uh, you see if you if you have to write this as uh, VGS because the sources of uh, M4 and M3 are tied up together, uh, and this is at minus 10 volts, so you can write the same expression as I1 is equal to 10 minus minus 10 minus VGS, right? I mean to bring uh, to write this as VGS4, you have to add and subtract uh, your VS, which is minus 10 volts. So the expression, the expression basically is the same as uh, over here. So it becomes uh, 20 minus VGS4. VGS4 is over here, where we are. One R1 is 30 k. Okay. So well, this is this is the first equation, and uh, you you know that uh, uh, these currents I1 and IQ, which is the same currents, it's the current mirror configuration uh, these currents are saturation currents of for the transistors m3 and m4 having the same conduction parameters k and 3 uh, the vgs4 is also the same okay vgs4 is vgs3 and threshold voltage is the same so threshold voltage is now k and 3 is now uh, we don't know vgs4 but we have two equations for that so if you are going to substitute i1 over here all right and solve this you you can make this if you com combine these two equations and substitute the parameter values you'll have a quadratic in vgs4 because vgs4 is the only unknown and if you're going to solve this uh, the the only possible solution that you will have is vgs4 is 2.4 volts and corresponding i1 is 0 0.5 at 700 milliampere so this current is the same as iq okay and this is the biasing current which is uh, which is providing the bias for M1 and M2, okay, without any application of the gate uh, voltages, gate signals at M1 and M2. You see, uh, it's the very same situation that over here. So IQ, we have found this IQ, okay. So this is 0 0.587 milliamps, right? And this uh, IQ is being provided by again. You see, there's there's no independent current source over here. Or in IC, you have everything is is based on MOSFETs of it, okay. So, for example, this RDs, they can also be um, uh, replaced by MOSFETs, by active loads, which are, again, transistors, okay? So, uh, the current source, which is provided by this uh, configuration M3 and M4, uh, this current is uh, making sure that M1 and M2 are in saturation region, okay? And even this IQ itself for M4 and M3 is, is saturation current. For M4 and M3, the IQ, you see, is, is saturation, is saturation current. Uh, then... Uh, so you have IQ, and then if you look at the symmetry of uh, these two uh, MOSFETs, M1 and M2, which are matched, and uh, they have the same uh, characteristics, uh, the conduction parameter is the same, the output resistance is infinite, okay, the input resistance is infinite, and the RD is the same. And so you, owing to the symmetry of the circuit, we can say that IQ is basically uh, twice of ID1, right, which is equal to twice of ID2, right? Which means ID1 and ID2 are equal and they are given as half of, which is which is half of uh, IQ. So ID1 is ID2, which is about 
i cube by 2 okay so we have the currents so uh, we have the currents id1 and id2 now okay and from these currents we can find what is uh, for example vgs1 right and what is vgs2 right because uh, these currents are again saturation currents and we know what is the threshold voltage right for all transistors is 1 volts kn2 uh, and uh, kn1 are given as 0.1 milliamps so we have the current and we can find vgs so m3 and m4 are identical so we also find iq as 0.587 so id1 id2 is iq by 2 that's 0.294 so we have this as point id1 id2 they are equal currents 0.294 milliamps and the gate to source voltage are then considering the uh, relationship of saturation current and voltage relationship of transistors you can take the square root okay so it becomes uh, square root of uh, id1 over kn plus vtn uh, this is what you see over here and you just substitute the values and find the vgs1 as 2.71 volts right so uh, to find the qcn values of the uh, output voltages or the drain voltages of uh, Two M1 and M2 transistors. Well, that, uh, that we, we, uh, these we, these output voltages are the basically the the DC voltages we are considering. So this is uh, V positive minus ID1 RD. Okay, 10 volts minus ID1 RD, which is given as 5.31 volts. Right. So this is basically the same uh, output voltage, uh, 5.31 volts for because of the symmetry because ID1 and ID2 are the same. So this be, both the transistors are the same. Uh, output voltages okay and uh, remember this that m1 and m2 are both operating in the saturation region as a different amplifier so uh, again the since uh, the objective was to find the maximum range of the common mode input voltage uh, you see uh, the maximum common mode input voltage well, considering that m1 and m2 are in saturation will be reached when the when uh, Around the transition point, okay, which, which, which means the maximum common, common mode input voltage is the value when M1 and M2 reach the transition point. So, how they are reaching the transition point? Well, it's when M3 and M4 start driving your transistors M1 and M2 uh, in saturation, okay. So, the maximum common mode input voltage can be written as so if, if you find the transition point for this VDS1 set. So since for the saturation uh, for the saturation uh, current we know what is VGS1 and VGS2 they are equal okay so VGS1 minus VTN that's the overdrive voltage so that that gives you the uh, VGS1 sat that's the that's the uh, transition point okay uh, 1.71 1 volts for the given VGS for the given VGS that's the transition point from where uh, uh, M1 and M2 transits from the ohmic region to the active region, right? So therefore, the common mode voltage maximum is given as uh, the output voltage V01 minus VDS1 sat plus VGS1. So basically, what we are what you are finding is uh, uh, over here. This is V out one is VD, right? This is VD, okay? And we are subtracting VDS1. So that means you are uh you leave you're left with the source voltage right so this this is the source voltage and uh, then this is the difference of gate and source voltage so you're left with the the common mode uh voltage at v1 and v2 okay so the maximum common mode voltage occurs when the transistor is going to reach your uh transition point so from uh, ohmic region to the active region this is the transition point for the given vgs okay so when does this, this happen for the given VGS is given by the corresponding VDS set. Okay, so this is VDS set. So um, you see we are we are finding this uh, common mode voltage for both M1 and M2 uh, at this point. Okay, where these transistors are biased in saturation region. Okay, so here you are finding uh, so this is VD. This is minus VDS set. So basically, this uh, whole expression is going to give you your VS, right? Which is VS1 maximum, VS max, VS max. This is VS max. And then you are left with the, uh, uh, if you take the whole expression, okay, this is then VG minus uh, VGS. So this gives you VG, the gate voltage. 
okay the gate voltage at the transistor terminal all right m1 uh, so this is again if you put the values v01 is 5.31 volts and vds sat is 1.71 volts which we have evaluated before and vgs1 for transistor m1 is 2.71 volts it basically is the same for both the transistors m1 and m2 so this is the maximum common, common mode voltage okay this is the maximum and uh, you can say uh, with regards to the uh, source so you have you be actually we are fine we were, we were finding vs1 max this is vs1 max so for the maximum common mode signal you, you have to find vs1 max uh, and then from vs1 max yeah, since you have vgs that's again dc quantities so you can find the common mode signal maximum common mode signal when these transistors are exiting the ohmic region and they are entering the transition. Uh, they are at the transition point, and after that, they, they, the transistor starts operating in the saturation region, right? So this is 6.31 volts. That's a maximum core mode signal. The minimum core mode input voltage is when M4 reaches the transition point. So for M4, again, uh, you have VGS4. Uh, VGS4 was evaluated as like such. Uh, we have this VGS4 as uh, 2.4 volts. Okay, this was for M4 transistors. So when this M4 transistors uh is going to uh, reach the transition point you'll have the minimum uh, common mode input voltage okay so and when m4 reaches the reaches the transition point that can be evaluated from v, the overdrive voltage vgs4 minus vtn that's 1.4 volts similarly v common mode minimum is again vgs1 uh, plus vds4 minus 10 volts okay so if you evaluate this this is minus 5.89 volts so basically what what what, what what, hap what, what, what is happening is that you have you are finding the range you, uh, you're looking at the range for the cone mode signal uh, that is from minimum to maximum and uh, the idea behind this behind this analysis is that since m1 and m2 they have to be operating they have, they have to be operated in the saturation region <clears throat> and that saturation current is being applied uh, by m3 and m4 okay so you you are not having any bias resistors for vg1 and vg2 well, the, the, that VGS1 and VGS2 are being established by the current IQ, okay? And then half of that current is ID1 and ID2, all right? Which gives you VGS1 and VGS2. So you find what is uh, corresponding VGS1 and VGS2 from the currents. And then what is the uh, maximum source voltage, source mold voltage, either maximum or minimum. So the maximum is when this M1 and M2, they reach the transition point and then they're operating in saturation region. And for the minimum common, common mode voltage is when your transistors M3 and M4 are at the transition point. Okay, so it's when the IQ is just uh, uh, transiting the ohmic or transiting the saturation from ohmics from saturation to ohmic region. Okay, so that that's minimum because after that uh, uh, down this transition point. Um, uh, there won't be any saturation current okay it will be ohmic current it will be a, a non-saturation current so this is the range then, then uh, when m3 m4 are operating in saturation this is the range okay so it must be about minus 5.89 for the common signal convert signal at uh, gates of the transistors m1 and m2 okay all right now uh, let's try to um, derive the dc transfer characteristics of the MOSFET differential pair uh, can be determined from the circuit in figure two. So again, this is the same uh, circuit. Um, so what, what is going on over here is that, uh, again, you have this uh, uh, current source, okay? This current source will basically, if you expand the circuit, it will consist of two MOSFET devices, which are current mirrors, and they are providing the constant current biasing so that M1 and M2 are in, uh, are in uh, saturation region, okay? And uh, like we have evaluated the range of uh, uh, the common mode signal, the range is again, uh, the gate voltages at the transistors M1 and M2, okay? And this gate voltages are being established by the currents, ID1 and I2. And uh, the minimum and maximum is when uh, uh, M4 is, is, uh, is at saturation and reaches the transition point, okay? And again, uh, when M1 and M2 reaches the saturation point, then you have the maximum common, common mode voltage, the gate voltage. So we're going to uh, derive the uh, output, uh, the, the sorry, the, the, the DC characteristics. So DC characteristics will be with respect to VD, the difference voltage versus, 
versus the uh, current ID, okay, versus the current ID1 and ID2, okay. So the difference voltage is again uh, is the difference between uh, VG1 and VG2, and uh, that will be plotted against the current ID1 and ID2. So we neglect the output resistances like we have done before in uh, in this example. We consider lambda to be zero. That means the output resistance is infinite. So let's neglect this output resistance of M1 and M2. They're open circuit. And assuming the two transistors are matched, they are identical. So we can write the uh, current equations for saturation region. So the relationship of uh, drain current and uh, for the given VGS is quadratic. That is uh, the case for saturation currents. So again, the same relationship for the MOSFET M2. So for these M1 and M2, the currents ID1 and ID2 are related, uh, are given by the saturation, since the currents are saturated currents. So for, in terms of VGS1, these are the expressions, okay? In terms of VGS1 and VGS2, we have these uh, two expressions. So taking the square roots of both the equations and subtracting the two equations, we obtain. So if you take the square root, uh, take the difference of uh, these two equations, what we're left with is, is the difference signal, okay? So it will be uh, under root ID1 minus under root ID2, Kn is the same, the both transistors are matched. So this becomes a different signal, and you can write this as under root Kn Vd. Okay, so now you have, you can see this, uh, you have a different signal, and you have a relationship of the different signal with the current ID1 and ID2, right? So uh, where Vd is uh, Vg1 minus Vg2, it's also the same as Vgs1 minus Vgs2 because the source uh, of both the M1 and M2 transistors are connected together. Okay, so it's, it's at the same potential. So VGS1 minus VGS2 is the differential mode uh, input voltage. Now, if VD is greater than zero, then this implies that VG1 is greater than VG2, or VGS1 is greater than VGS2, which further implies that ID1, of course, is greater than ID2. Okay. Now, if you see, uh, for the same uh, match or identical transistors, if threshold voltage is the same, the conduction parameter is the same. Uh, if VGS1 is the same, then ID currents are the same. Okay. But if VGS1 and VGS2 uh, if VGS1 is greater than VGS2, then of course ID1 is greater than uh, ID2. Okay, so it's written over here, VGS1 greater than VGS2. And uh, you can see these from these two equations, then ID1 is going to be greater than ID2. Okay, now, uh, assuming the circuit is matched, okay, so RD is the same resistance at the drain terminals, and uh, the currents are equal. That means these two currents, uh, well, I mean, even if they are not, uh, if they're not symmetrical, if VGS1 is different, VGS2 is different, of course, ID1 and ID2 is going to be different. They are the saturation currents, given the other parameters are the same. But if you apply KCL at the source terminal, at the source terminal, then uh, these two currents are going to add up to give the uh, biasing current IQ. So ID1 is plus ID2 is always equal to IQ. Okay, that's the KCL at the source terminal. Then the substitution, uh, you see over here, if you have to... Uh, uh, make this expression in terms of ID1 only, you have to find expression for VD versus only one uh, current, ID1. Then uh, you can replace ID2 by IQ minus ID1, okay? And uh, then you can take the square and you can uh, rearrange the terms as such. You can take the square of both sides, it becomes KN, VD square. And uh, it's the same equation over here. So, so if you take the, um, uh, if you rearrange the terms, take the square root, you will end, you'll end up uh, in a relationship in which you have an uh, expression relating ID1 to the difference voltage, to the quadratic of the difference voltage signal, okay? So if you square uh, the both sides of this equation, uh, you develop a quadratic equation. Uh, so you have uh, ID1, okay, relating to VD square, right? So if ID1, for example, this, this, is, a, this is a typical quadratic relation, and if you uh, just apply the quadratic formula uh, to find ID1, uh, you find an expression of ID1 uh, relating to VD. So this is given by the quadratic formulation. So using this uh, following equation, since ID1 plus ID2 is IQ, well, you can find for the other current as well. So you see in both cases, ID1 and ID2 are relating to uh, VD. Okay, so VD is occurring over here. Other parameters are, for example, KN, the conduction parameter is the same. Uh, IQ is the same, it's given by ID1 and ID2 in both expressions. So you see, if you add ID1 and ID2, basically this is plus, this is minus. So you gain, you, you end up with IQ, okay? So uh, we, we, so we got the uh, uh, DC transfer characteristics relating the drain currents to the difference voltages. 
And uh, now if you uh, normalize this drain current with respect to IQ and you plot these two expressions over here, that's how it looks like with the normalized VD as well. Since the currents are normalized, we have normalized VD, so both are dimensionless quantities, right? So uh, basically this is VD divided by uh, divided by uh, uh, square root of 2 IQ Kn over here, right? Uh, well, the normalization makes certain things, uh, to view certain things much easier. For example, the first thing is if uh, the difference voltage is zero, if the difference voltage is zero, then that means, uh, that means both currents ID1 and ID2, ID1 and ID2, the normalized currents are, are halved. Okay, you can see from this expression as well. If VD is zero, VD is zero, then uh, ID1 over IQ is half, which means uh, ID1 and IDQ are uh, uh, are equal, and they are half of the Q sinked current or the uh, or the sourcing current, which is uh, which is biasing the both MOSFETs. Okay, so this is this is evident at this point. Okay, then the other point is that uh, you see, for example, at the extreme ends, this point is when, and this point, and this point, this point, these two points are when. And the transistors are switching the currents. Uh, so from one uh, transistor to another transistor, the current is switched from zero to IQ. Okay. So for example, over here, ID1 is IQ, right? ID1 is IQ, while uh, ID2 is zero. Okay. Then over here, at this point, at this point for the dashed curve, ID2 becomes IQ, while ID1 becomes zero. Okay. So over here, you see, ID1 is zero. ID1 is zero, but uh, over here, ID2 is equal to IQ. So the basically the uh, uh, the current is switched from one transistor to another. Okay, and this this is the other way around over here. So this this, this relationship is for ID1. So ID1 is IQ over here, and then your uh, ID2 is zero over here. I2 is zero over here. So I2 become when I2 is zero, then I D1 becomes IQ. Okay. When uh, I D2 is IQ, I D1 is zero. And one when does this happen? Well, this is also evident from this equation, from this relationship. And this happens when your basically your VD is square root of IQ by Kn. When the difference signal is equal to square root of IQ by Kn. Then, uh, if you substitute this, well, this expression over here, over here, or uh, this ID1 relationship, uh, well, uh, you, you can see this that uh, um, this uh, is going to be, well, this part is going to be 1 over under 2, right? This is 1 over under 2. Substitute this for uh, basically for under root IQ over Kn then uh, Kn and IQ are going to cancel out. Then you are left with 1 minus 1 over 2. So this whole thing becomes 1 over under 2, right? And then this 1 over under 2 gets multiplied by this 2, which is under the square root. And uh, again, you will have uh, 1 over 2 over here, okay? And uh, this is minus 1 over 2. Well, this becomes 0, but this becomes... Uh, this is plus over here. This is 1 over 2 plus 1 over 2 because uh, VD is going to cancel. VD is square root of IQ over KN. So this these terms are going to go out. These terms are going to go out. This, this is there will be cancellation from here, from here. And then you're left with ID, ID2 will be 0 over, over here at this point. I2 will be 0 and ID1 is equal to IQ. So, so there will be a switching in the transistor. So the current is going to switch. And this happens where uh, well, this happens at VD equal to under root of IQ over KN, okay? And uh, if you look at this expression, which is normalized, and if VD is uh, IQ over KN, well, this, this is 1 over under root 2, then, okay? Because we are plotting the transfer characteristics, similarly, this is minus 1 over under root 2. Because we are plotting uh, this equation, this, this equation describes the DC transfer characteristics for the circuit, okay, which is basically ID1 and ID2, ID1 and ID2, normalized, normalized ID1 and ID2. So let me divide.
divide this by IQ for both of the terms versus the normalized voltage, which you see over here, right? So they're plotted in the figure four as a function of normalized different input voltage, uh, differential input voltage, VD over uh, under two IQ gain, right? So, uh, so when this difference is zero, when, the, when there is no differential input voltage, then uh, ID1 is equal to ID2, which is equal to IQ, okay? So ID1 plus ID2 becomes equal to IQ. And, uh, and both are half of the uh, Q-sin currents, but the maximum is occurring when they, there's a switching. Uh, so at maximum uh, VD, uh, which is equal to one over under two, okay? For the normalized uh, VD dash, VD prime, uh, this occurs when one of the current becomes IQ, okay? So these are the things that you see for, uh, that has to be viewed from DC characteristics. So at a specific differential input voltage, the bias current is switched entirely to one transistor or the other. And this occurs in VD max is IQ over uh, Kn, square root, so we have seen over here. So uh, magnitude means, uh, well, this is, uh, this occurs from minus one over under two to one over under two. And that's the value of the normalized uh, differential voltage. Okay, this switching occurs maybe in this range. And uh, the forward transconductance is defined as the slope of ID1 versus VD characteristics uh, evaluated at VD equal to zero. So if you take the slope over here, you'll find this, uh, if you take the slope, then this slope is going to give you the uh, value of the uh, uh, forward transconductance gain of the transistors. That's called this GMF. And GMF is, uh, given as delta ID normalized uh, differential, normalized uh, drain current divided by the differential voltage, VD, right? So we are evaluating this at the drain voltage, uh, VD, this is VD. Uh, the differential voltage is zero. So if you're going to, uh, well, if you take the gradient, if you're going to uh, differentiate this with respect to uh, and any one of this expression, if you differentiate this with respect to uh, VD uh, and set VD equal to zero, you will find that GF max is uh, this differential at VD equal to zero becomes square root of Kn IQ by two, okay, which can be written as uh, GM by two. So this is, uh, uh, is a transconductance of each transistor. You see, it, it has a, uh, New units of amps per volts. Okay, amps per volts. So the slope of ID2 characteristic at VD2 is the same, except it's negative. Okay, because if you're, if you're going to differentiate, you see the VD dependence is in this expression. You just forget about this expression. This is this is not going to be important, and uh, you can leave this out, leave that out. And uh, the first, uh, well, the derivative will be, it will be like one plus, and then you will you will deal with this term, this term. Uh, so this term will be something like you will have uh, uh, VD will be in the will come in the uh, numerator, okay? And then it will be two VD square, so divided by the same under root expression, right? So basically, uh, if you're going to leave the first time out, so you are left with uh, Kn divided by IQ, okay? Kn divided by IQ, two IQ. So you're left with this, with this uh, only uh, with this with this term, K and IQ by two, okay? Because then VD is zero. So for VD is zero, this, this term is also out, okay? So you're only left with this term only. Only this term is going to be left. And this is the gradient. This is the forward uh, transconductance parameter of uh, the MOSFETs, okay? So these are the, tra these, these are again the transfer characteristics of uh, transconductance, uh, parameter which is evaluated from the DC transfer characteristics uh, of the drain current versus the differential voltage. Okay, so you see as yes, the differential voltage is, is increasing, one of the current is increasing and the other is decreasing and basically switching action is, is happening. Okay, so you see if the differential voltage is different uh, depending on VGS1 and VGS2, well, the drain currents are different. Okay, the drain currents are different. So that means uh, if the difference exists, if the difference is positive, then of course ID1 is greater than ID2. If the difference is negative, then of course ID2 is greater than ID1. Okay, that that that, that can be seen from here as well. Okay, so if VGS1 is greater than VGS2, then of course ID1 is greater than ID2. Okay, similarly if VGS2 is greater than VGS1, then ID2 is greater than 
already one that that can be that can be seen from here as well okay that can be seen here as well when the difference is zero then both the currents are equal and that, that happens at this point if you take the gradient at this point that gives you the forward transcriptance gain and the uh, in terms of uh, gm in terms of uh, amps per volts right okay so um, and the maximum occurs when one of the transistors switches so switches off and the other is fully on so so it happens at both the ends, and that's the maximum uh, differential voltage is normalized differential voltage is one over under two or seventy percent. Okay, point seven or seven. All right. Um, now, figure five is uh, uh, the AC equivalent circuit of the difference amplifier configuration, showing only the differential voltage and the signal currents as a function of transistor uh, single transistor current transconductor CM. So we assume that the output resistance looking into the current source is infinite. Um, using the equivalent circuit, we find the one-sided output voltage uh, V naught two as follows. So if, if you uh, okay from this, this is the DC circuit. So we are going to drive an AC circuit, and uh, to drive that, uh, you have to kill all the independent sources. You have to kill this uh, uh, <clears throat> DC sources. Okay, so this is grounded. And then uh, this is this is gone. Okay, so this is this becomes signal ground, source becomes signal ground, and then you have the basically the difference uh, signal is again V D, which is V one minus V two. So you see the polarity as such. So you, you you have this half of this difference uh, signal at both the gate terminals of M one and M two. Okay, so it's again V D. Uh, but again, uh, you're taking the output, so it's a single output circuit. Okay, the output will be taken from M two, and uh, you see uh, <clears throat> given the signal grounds. Uh, the transconductance is GM, which means the input voltage is VD by 2. So that means the current is going to be in the AC current circuit, it's going to be GM VD by 2. Okay, so uh, the output voltage from the MOSFET M2 is going to be GM VD by 2. That's the current of the of the uh, of the drain current of the M2, and that drain current is flowing in the, the transistor M1 as well. That's the AC current, right? Multiply by the RD. Multiplied by so that that's your output signal, that's the output AC signal, and uh, therefore the differential voltage gain is the ratio of V naught by V D. So you see, if you bring V D over here in the, uh, in the on the left hand side in the denominator, then you're left with G M R D over two. Okay, so G M R D over two, and G M if you bring G M over two, if you recall, was uh, square root of K N I Q by two. Just substitute this over here. So everything is determined, okay. In terms of the quiescent current, okay, uh, you have the differential gain of the uh, of the uh, MOSFET amplifier config of the of the um, ideal and MOS differential amplifier configuration, right? Now uh, for the differential uh, and onboard input impedances, uh, you see at low frequencies the input uh, input uh, in, input impedance of MOSFET is essentially infinite, okay, because of the uh, gate capacitance. Uh, when the frequencies are low, the input impedance is high. So, which means that both the differential and common mode input resistances of MOSFET differential amplifiers are infinite. Then, uh, also we know that the differential input resistance of a bipolar pair can be in the low kilo ohm range. Okay, so for BJTs it could be smaller. So, a design trade-off uh, then would be to use MOSFET differential amplifier with uh, infinite input resistance. And sacrifice the differential mode voltage gain. Well, we can, we can go on increasing the differential mode voltage gain. We'll see that uh, uh, differential mode voltage gain for MOSFET pairs is dependent on the output resistance. And to increase the output resistance, we can you know bring a, uh, a current mirror configuration over here, okay, uh, where the signal ground is connected. So if you're going to increase the output resistance of MOSFETs, you can still have a, have a a respectable differential gain of the circuit okay so we'll talk about that in the next video thank you